measuring brain waves and using neurofeedback with Dr. Tanmoy Sharma, Chief Executive Officer for the Sovereign Health Group, and Dr. Judy Ho, PhD in Clinical Psychology and contributor for CNN, CBS, ESPN, and HLN. Can you explain to me how you use a quantitative EEG as an assessment tool? An EEG is an electroencephalograph. It is like an EKG uh, uh, that you would have for the heart. It really picks up electrical impulses mm -hmm. from the brain. There are impulses that we generate when we have uh, any thoughts. Uh, and so these are very minor impulses that you're picking up uh, from the surface mm -hmm. of, the, of the brain, uh, of the head and the scalp, really. And these are then measured. And you look at what are the types of brain waves, mm -hmm. if you like, that are there. Uh, there are different types of brain waves, and they signify different types of brain activity. Mm -hmm. And the, without getting into too much technical detail, you have a certain type of brain activity that people with addiction and substance abuse and addiction have. And the idea is to decrease that type of brain activity in relationship, say type A brain activity to type B brain activity, mm -hmm. to change that ratio Mm -hmm. from this ratio to that ratio. So, and you want to so-called normalize this. Mm -hmm. It's like cholesterol. You have low-density cholesterol, high-density cholesterol. Both are required, but it's the ratio between the two. So after doing the assessment with the quantitative EEG where you get the levels of all four types of brain waves and their ratios, what do you do in treatment? What is the next step to help them get their emotion regulation and the decision making back on track? We, we would use uh, neurofeedback. Uh, in neurofeedback, you are, our patients are typically, there, there are 12 to 20 sessions. They, it, each session is between half an hour to 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. And they are looking uh, at a video monitor and there is a video or a picture uh, on the monitor. And they are looking at a stimulus which is evoking a certain emotion. Mm -hmm. And we are training them to change that ratio that I talked about, the ratio of certain types of brain waves. Mm -hmm. And we want to see that that ratio is normalized. Let's say somebody is drinking a lot of, lot of vodka. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you show somebody a bottle of vodka in, in the stimulus, and they, a certain types of brain waves show up. You train them how they are able to still go through the day mm -hmm. uh, and how they're able to change their brain waves uh, and still able to function without how, you know, with, and still be able to resist. Uh, and still function without having to have those cravings. So you start decreasing the kind of brain waves associated with cravings. Mm -hmm. So you, it's self-regulation. You are not telling them what to do. Mm -hmm. You are empowering that person mm -hmm. uh, to take control over their own brain waves. And they can see that happening as they go along. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are, they can see that that makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people that we have uh, come to our center, especially one of them, uh, one uh, center that we have in uh, Arizona, uh, are women that have suffered from trauma mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and have addiction or mental health problems. We see a huge effect of neurofeedback.